kick it with some mortal realm. <laughs> until, ugh, fuck. And until, oh my god, I can't even say my own fucking outro. Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to be transforming into Poseidon from the Lore Olympus webcomic. I hope you guys enjoy this video. There's a lot of tips and tricks for body painting uh, and I also show you how I made these fun little ears. So if you want to see how I created this look, then keep on watching, baby. All right, so let's get started with the ears. There are a ton of tutorials on YouTube about how to do fin ears. Um, I kind of combined and made up my own method of doing it, but I started by drawing the basic shape I wanted onto craft foam and cutting it out, and then tracing it to get two perfectly identical opposite side fin ear spine shape thingies. Then I saw the plastic that came from the overwrap to the brand new lens that my boyfriend just got me. Thank you, I love you so much. And I kind of thought, this might look kind of cool to sandwich between two pieces of craft foam. Kind of create that membranous texture, that kind of mermaid ear-like thingy-mabobber, I don't know. So I went for it. I used hot glue for this, but super glue or another kind of adhesive would probably work better because the hot glue did end up warping the plastic slightly, but you know what, that's what I used. So I glued both sides into a sandwich, sandwiching the plastic between them, and then I cut out the excess material around the outsides as well as shaped the sort of curved inner parts of the ear. And this is where I left my ears. I definitely need to paint them before I wear this to a convention, but for a makeup test, I thought that this was perfect. You can also do the membrane part with latex, um, but again, this is just cheap and accessible. To start off the makeup, I'm going to apply my wig. I'm using the Got To Be Glued Spiking Glue. I'm putting this on my forehead where I want the wig to lay, and also using the excess to smooth down my baby hairs and the sides of my hairs that stick out. Uh, this is the method I found for laying down lace fronts that works the best for me. Spirit glue, spirit gum, whatever it is, just doesn't work, as you'll see later in the video. Using my heat gun to dry that first layer out, please use a hair dryer. Now I'm applying a second layer of the spiking glue and then spraying it with the freeze spray. And after that's had a bit of time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and put my wig on. I'm securing the combs first and kind of putting it in the general area that I want it and then I'm going to start pushing the lace down into the glue that's on my forehead. And I'm just using the back side of my teasing comb to press down the edges of the lace. And then playing a really dangerous game and taking my heat gun to the edges of my synthetic wig to dry out the glue even further. Then I'm just going to put my hair up in a low bun to get it out of my face for the face paint application. And using my fancy new zoom lens, you can see that this is what the edge of the lease is looking like after application. I think it looks pretty darn good for only my second time applying a lace front. Please ignore my dry skin. Um, but obviously this is matching my natural skin tone and not the tone that my skin is going to be when I paint it green. So I went in with some green eyeshadow to try and color the lace. Now I should have done this before I put the wig on my head and I'm definitely going to have to redo it with something more intense than green eyeshadow. As you can see later in the video, when I'm fully painted, there's still a pretty hard difference between the lace color and my painted green skin. Okay, I'm going to start applying the face paint now, and I figured that it would actually be easier in this part for me to talk to you now, as opposed to doing a voiceover of it later, um, just because I think it's one of those things that's more helpful to talk through it as I'm doing it. Um, this was something that I struggled a lot with when I was first starting out doing makeup looks is how to get the 
body paint to have even coverage, what tool to apply it with. Um, I was having a really difficult time getting it to be even. It was all patchy, it was weird, it wasn't the right color. So I feel like I've finally gotten to a good place with it and I want to show that with you guys. So I'm going to be using the Mayron Paradise colors. These are my favorite uh, body paints. I like them the best out of even all the Mayron products. I haven't tried that many things, but these always work for me. They always give an even coverage now that I know how to use them. Um, and they smell like a pina colada. So that's also a plus. So I just opened this up. I have not even tested it yet. Hopefully it's the right color. I think it'll be fine. This is the light green. Uh, the Amazon green worked great. I wore it to the Renaissance Festival. It did come off where my tusks were, but pretty much nowhere else. And it was really hot that day. So, you know, I, I trust these things. I have not worn one to a convention yet, so I don't know how it stands up under those circumstances, but I know that people rave about these uh, paradise colors, so I'm sure it's also fantastic for that. I'm just gonna redo my hair because it's kind of falling out here. Also low key, <laughs> love this little low bun look, I think it's very cute. I'm gonna start off by applying a little bit of oil to my forehead because my skin is really dry right now and I don't want there to be any texture showing through on the body paint. Um, any kind of like flaky textures, anything like that, those will get in the way of the body paint. They will show through. Any color that you have, like any redness, anything like that, um, I found for me it gets completely covered in one application. I don't find any issues with having any kind of red marks show through the paint at all, which is really awesome because it means that you don't have to conceal before you apply these, which is very nice because the less you have to do, the more time you can spend getting into costume, which always takes forever. Now that I've applied that oil and let it sink into my skin a little bit, I'm just going to go ahead and blot away the excess with just a little toilet tissue. I don't want any of the oils to interfere with how the body paint is sticking to my skin. So I just want to make sure that I'm not oily, just moisturized. Next, I'm going to take a primer. This is literally one that I got at a dollar store. I'm sure <laughs> that you can find one that works even better than that, but this one works totally fine for me. It's kind of one of those more like silicone-y textured ones. Some people hate those. I think they're really fun to play with. So, oh, whoops. <laughs> Shit. I guess there was, um, red body paint from hell girl somewhere in my makeup bag so that's all over my hands now give me one second to wet that off now that my primer's on i am going to lay down a base of the Maron barrier spray this is i really think the key to getting an even application and to making the removal super easy it is supposed to help against um, the body paint staining your skin. That's why it's called barrier spray. It creates this kind of sheet in between the paint and your skin for it to stick to so that any kind of like imperfections in the texture of your skin besides like really dry skin or whatever um, will have a smooth base for the paint to go over. Um, it kind of burns, <laughs> not gonna lie. I think it's mostly alcohol based, um, you can smell it, it gets in your eyes and burns. So just be careful with this stuff, make sure you're not getting too much in your wig because it will like leave little weird droplets. Um, but yeah, I just spray this all over my face in an even coat and then kind of brush it dry with my hands. And if you have like a bathroom fan, I usually like leave it on when I'm spraying this stuff on, but um, because I'm recording, I didn't want to have that sound on. So you can see that it kind of like leaves a bit of shininess, but you can feel it when it's on your skin. It'll be kind of tightening a little bit. So that would be my first tip is a good base. You want moisturized skin. You want to lay down a primer, like a regular makeup primer. I'm sure Cryol and Mayron make an actual makeup primer as well if you want to use one of those. And then to use the barrier spray, especially 
if you're going to be using the Mehron paints because I think they're kind of designed to work with each other. My next tip would be to use a brush, a synthetic bristle brush. Got this at the dollar store at CVS something. I saw it and I was like, oh snap, I need that. I don't even remember how much it was. It's like a nothing brand. I just bought it because I saw it and thought that the shape and size would be good. And so far it's worked great. So I don't think you need anything fancy. I definitely recommend using a brush and not a sponge. When I've used a sponge in the past to apply it, I think any liquid that's held in the sponge comes out just slightly when you pat it onto your face. And as this is a water-based paint and you wash it off with water, if there's any liquid when you're applying it, it's not going to apply because the water keeps washing it away. So if you don't get seamless application with your like initial pass with the sponge and you try to go back over an area, it completely destroys the work that you just did. So using a brush, my third tip is to perhaps use slightly more water than you are expecting and to not stop mixing it until you have a very, very thick paste-like consistency. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the camera down so that you can see what it looks like when I'm mixing it so that you would get an idea of how long it takes and how, how much I'm actually working the product up. So I put some water on my brush and then I go ahead and I use the tips of my fingers covered in water to just apply some drops of water into the pan. I hope you can see that, I can't really tell. So that's about how much water I use. Then I start mixing the paint up with the brush and I really go in. It, this is gonna be messy, you guys. Like, this stuff gets all over the pan, it gets all over your sink, it gets all over your hands. Luckily though, it's just water washable, so <laughs> anywhere near your sink really isn't that much of a problem, I think. So yeah, just keep mixing it up. I like to kind of squeeze the excess liquid out um, so that I can mix it back in and make sure that it's going to be the right consistency. Um, this is the consistency that you're looking for. This kind of like pasty, it doesn't run at all. It's very thick in the pan and you can squeeze it out of the brush. This is the consistency that I like to have. I'm going to add some more water though because I want more product to ensure that I'm getting it all over my face. Okay, now that I've got the makeup all mixed up, now I'm gonna go ahead and start applying it. I just wipe off any like big excess that I have at the base of my brush and then just go in with long, even strokes. Ah, uh, it looks like this color is gonna be perfect for my big bro side and... Oh, try not to get it inside your mouth, that's usually unadvisable. Yeah, whenever you feel like your brush has run out of product, just dip it back in and keep painting. And thank goodness I'm wearing ears for him so I don't have to freaking paint my ears. That is my least favorite thing to do. Oh my god. I hate painting my ears and I hate washing them out. Okay, now because I don't think Poseidon's rocking any major eyeshadow look, I am going to go ahead and take this onto my eye as far down as I feel comfortable taking it. Obviously I'm going to fill in the more sensitive and delicate areas with eyeshadow so that I'm not getting body paint into my eye, um, but as I'm not going to be wearing like a big eyeshadow look, I want to make sure that as much as possible the surface is covered. I just go ahead and keep building everything up in layers, making sure that I don't have any like really noticeable brush strokes by just blending everything out. Okay, so I think that's looking like a good 
layer down. This is what it's looking like. Um, <laughs> as I said before, this stuff is not gonna hide texture. Um, it will hide redness, but all of your texture is gonna be very apparent. Because of that, I wanna go ahead and set this as quickly as possible. So I'm going to take my Maron setting powder. I use this for literally everything, even my just regular everyday, well, not everyday, but my regular normie makeup, I use this as my setting powder. Um, my brush is covered in red paint from Hell Girl, so hopefully this goes okay. Um, I'm just going to literally completely saturate my brush and then just pat it onto my skin. Let me just say, if you're wearing this much body paint, your skin is not going to look good. You are gonna look very cakey. It's gonna look bad, but in photos, you're gonna look fine. And you're gonna look like you're a different color, which is really what's important. And then I just take the last little bit and use it to buff the powder in all over my face. I also just want to say, I use this stuff so much, all the time, again, not even just for cosplay, and I have had this thing for years, and it is not even halfway done. Oh god. But it does go everywhere, so try not to get it in your lens. And I definitely don't suggest wearing the clothes that you're going to be wearing, um, unless it's something with a tight neck hole, and then I suggest pinning a towel around you because the powder will get Oh my god, you guys. It's okay, I'm going to be like giving myself a lot of man contour, so, but <laughs> it's like a perfect line. How did I miss it? Anyways, then I'm gonna try and get my eyes to look at least moderately green in the areas that don't currently have body paint. My green is not very pigmented, so I definitely suggest you do this with with a pigmented eyeshadow. And I'm just going in with my finger now to kind of deepen everything up and then blending it with my fluffy brush. And they all the brothers in Laura like this kind of have large dark circles under their eyes so I'm just using the excess to kind of blend out my contour for the eye socket and also give that kind of dark circle look under the eye. I think I've mentioned this before but with male makeup, my favorite places to contour are right here on the inner corner of the eye and right here on the um, outer temple. I think these places really do a lot to change your face shape and make you look more masculine. Just gonna contour the side of my nose with the extra eyeshadow on my brush. All right, so there are the eyes. I think they're looking pretty good. Again, meh. Can't really do that much about it, so gonna move on. Gonna use the same shade to start contouring the other parts of my face. Uh, I'm gonna do the outside temple like i was saying before i really like to bring this down really low like to right above the top of my cheekbone so that it really makes this section of my face look deeper and it really helps to draw attention to the highlight of my cheekbone 
So did you guys hear that Lore Olympus is getting made into a freaking Netflix show with Jim Henson Company? Pretty crazy. What do you guys think about that? Are you excited? Do you think it's gonna be good? Are you nervous? I'm gonna take that onto my forehead as well. Give myself some contour around the edges of the forehead. I'm gonna go ahead and contour my cheek and jawline. And this is um, something that I really struggle with a lot. I <laughs> find that I am really bad at contouring in general, but especially to make my face look like a literal ancient Greek god man. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see as best as I can what to do. So you can see, I have a very defined line this way and a semi-defined line here. But it really makes that side of my face look chiseled. So I'm gonna just do that on the other side now. All right, so now both sides of my cheeks are contoured. I think I'm getting better at this, slowly but surely. Now I'm going to go ahead and extend it down in a straight line, cutting from my ear, like kind of back around my jaw, and then I'm going to contour my jaw, just down the length of the whole thing, and I'm going to go in under my lips to make my chin really pronounced and just give myself a tiny tiny bunch just a baby bunch because you know I feel like Poseidon probably has a bunch in and I'm gonna start defining my neck as well so I'm just going where my natural give string the neck, where those natural tendons are and vessels to make them stand up even more. All right, so I think the last step for the face is going to be to do some eyebrows, but I can't do those with this camera on my face, so I'm gonna do them off camera but I'm just gonna give him big, bushy, black eyebrows. I'm doing a bit of eyeliner now to make sure that my waterline is not pink, which would make my skin look like it was painted. Ideally, you'd wanna do this with a green, but I don't have a green <laughs> eyeliner, so I'm just gonna do it with black and hope that it looks stylistically enough like a cartoon anyways, that it won't matter. Just taking a little blunt blend blending brush to just blend out any harsh edges on the liner. And this will kind of play into that dark under eye look as well. I am going to put on just a teeny tiny little bit of mascara just to define my lashes a little bit. Ideally, he would use brown mascara, but I only have black, so that's what I'm gonna go for. Just taking my finger, kind of blinking any excess product off, so it's literally just a tiny coating on the lashes. I then use some liquid latex to stick the crap foam ears that I made to my face. And for some reason, I didn't talk through this part, so I'm doing it now. I think the ears turned out really cool for just a super quick and cheap DIY. Obviously, once they're painted, they'll look even better, but I think that the plastic kind of pulls off that look that I'm going for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think it turned out pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. 
I will be in a Lore Olympus group at KatsuCon and I am going to be doing his wedding photo version. Um, we have a Zeus now, we have had a Hades, and I think the three of us are going to do the like kind of military suit outfit, so I'm really excited for that. That's going to be a fun project, but for now, a little casual makeup test I think looks great. And if you'd like to see more from me, I have new videos every Wednesday. My Instagram is also Tree Cosplay if you'd like to see photos and more finished costume stuff there. Now that Costober's over and I have a lot more time to get back into filming, I'm definitely going to be up on my regular schedule again. For now, I heard Apollo's trying to kick it with some girls in the mortal realm, so I'm going to get out of here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!